Gracias. I'm done with it. Council Member Jolando, please take it away. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be with everybody this evening. I'm Council Member Will Jawando. I'm an at-large member of the council, which is a fancy way of saying I have the honor of representing all of our uh, 1.1 million residents. Uh, born and raised here in the county, uh, in the Long Branch area of Silver Spring, University Boulevard and Piney Branch, uh, and uh, have been here my entire life. Raised, my wife and I were raising our four children here, uh, and it's a great, great community. Uh, one of the reasons it's a great community, there's many, uh, is that we are one of the most diverse communities in the country. Uh, four of the top 10 most diverse cities in the country are in Montgomery County, uh, Silver Spring, Gaithersburg, Germantown, and Rockville. Uh, several are in Silver Spring and Gaithersburg in the, in the top two. Um, and we have a, a wealth of education and languages spoken and so many things. Um, we're also, uh, but not unlike other parts of the country, uh, we have a history of uh, racism and segregation uh, and discrimination and unequal opportunity, right? That's to, to be American and is that's part of our story too, as much as the great things are. And, and we have that here in Montgomery County. And, and I wanted to come by tonight to intro uh, this discussion uh, and listening session about the Fairland Briggs Cheney plan, uh, because it's really important uh, in that story and that part of that equity uh, story of Montgomery County. Uh, there, there were decisions made in the past um, to uh, not include this part of the county uh, where I lived for a long time in the East County, I still live in the East County, uh, to not develop it and to not have the same level of uh, job opportunities and amenities uh, and investments in, in transportation infrastructure and the like. And that was an intentional planning decision in 1993 did not call this part of the county a growth area, uh, which would bring and incentivize those types of things. Um, and we're still living with the consequences of that. And, uh, and right now I sit on the Planning, Housing and Economic Development Committee for the council, which is the committee that reviews all the land use decisions and the planning decisions and makes recommendations to the full council uh, after hearing from the planning board, uh, who's doing a great job uh, putting this together tonight. And we sit and make those decisions. And right now we're considering as part of the Thrive 2050 plan, what the next 30 years are gonna look like in Montgomery County. Uh, we're gonna correct uh, that era in the East County in particular, and it will be a growth area and there will be uh, incentives and other types of uh, infrastructure and jobs and amenities uh, to be encouraged to come to that part of the county. And we want, cause that's what everyone wants. Everyone wants access to transit, everyone wants access to a good job, everyone wants access to a great restaurant. Um, and that's what planning, among, along with so many other things, is connected to. Um, and I talked about this recently to a group, and I said, you know, for a, much of our history, uh, planning and land use decisions have been inflicted upon uh, communities of color, as opposed to uh, something like that you're do, seeing tonight, an example of community input about what do we want to see? What do we want to shape the participatory democracy of what do we want our communities to be and to look like uh, and to feel like? Uh, that is what this is an example of tonight, to hear from you all about what you want to see. Um, and this is a, a start of a process or it's, the, it's a part of a process, not the whole process. There'll be many, many more conversations. There's been other community events, um, but I felt it was important to stop by uh, to help set the tone uh, for what tonight is and, and understand that part of our growth uh, as a county and a community is hearing from everybody and making sure that everyone has a seat at the table. You know, there's a saying that Shirley Chisholm used to say is that if you're not uh, at the table, you're on the menu, right? And uh, it's something that I use often because I think it's a great analogy. And tonight we're at the table. And, and now you have to speak up at that at the table. If you don't speak up, you won't get the food either. You know, so, so that's why you're mm -hmm. here. So don't, don't be shy um, and make sure that uh, everyone participates and is involved in the process. So uh, I'm really excited to, to hear my staff is here as well, Seamus McNamara, and we're going to be taking copious notes as well as with the planning staff. And we look forward to hearing what folks have to say and continuing along this process uh, over the next months and years to make sure that the Fairland Briggs Cheney area has every bit of opportunity and amenity and all the great things that Montgomery County has to offer 
to all of its residents. So great to be with you tonight. Um, and if you have any issues, please reach out to my office. I'm very easy to find, just councilmember.jawando at montgomerycountymd.gov or 240-777-7811 is my number. So have a good evening and, and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much, Council Member Jawando, and I appreciate you for being here and your leadership, your leadership and your support. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Melaine Jackson. Most people call me Molly. Feel free to call me either one, Melaine Jackson or Molly, same person. I have the honor and privilege of hosting this evening's session alongside with my colleague, Catherine Nelson, who specializes in environmental issues that are related to planning as well as just uh, development review issues as well, which is kind of the development process, the entitlement process. Um, together, we will be uh, discussing the importance of equitable communities, a vibrant economy, and healthy in a healthy environment. I wanna take a moment to also introduce a few other people because it's not just the two of us. Um, I also am co-leading this master plan with my esteemed colleague, Philip Estes, who is our producer director tonight. Thank you so much, Philip, for your leadership, for your support as well. We are also here with um, our team, our master planning team, uh, who is gonna be helping us to facilitate conversations in the smaller breakout sessions. I won't introduce everyone because in the interest of time, I wanna make sure that everyone gets a chance to speak. Um, but I also wanna just mention that it's, it's not just us alone, like we are a village. so. We hope that you are going to have a great time this evening. It's intended for this to be an experience, one that you will want to keep coming back to and revisiting with us. Again, the agenda tonight is the introduction. We're going to do a quick poll um, and we're going to do an icebreaker in addition to the quick poll. The poll is to make sure that we know who's with us tonight, that we have a, um, a good idea of who we're talking with, but um, whether or not you live in the county or you, or you work in the county is important to us. Um, the icebreaker is there to get us motivated, to get us excited about talking to one another, meeting our neighbors. And the icebreaker and polling is gonna be led by Story Tapestries. Story Tapestries is an, is an arts organization in the county. If you are not familiar with them, please, please do look them up. Please get familiar with them. They, they're here to inspire us, to educate us, to empower us, to encourage us. And this icebreaker is gonna get us started, get us motivated in the right direction so that we can, we can speak up and we can speak our truth. So I hope that you take advantage of this opportunity and speak your truth. So let's get into some of the master planning effort. We started this effort in 2021, just eight months ago. So we're brand new to the process. Oh, let me tell you that the purpose of tonight is to listen to you and to provide and to apply whatever feedback we gather from this e evening into the master planning process. Like I said, we're gonna be broken up into smaller groups. I forgot to go through the rest of the agenda, so excuse me. We're gonna go through smaller groups and then we're gonna come back in the larger group and debrief. And then I'll, I'll join uh, Story Tapestries for the wrap up. But as I was talking about the master plan, right? To the right, on the right side of this slide, you'll, you're seeing the master plan boundary outlined in black. And to orient you, we have the US 29 or what we like to call Columbia Pike running north to south. Thank you very much, Lauren. Lauren is our transportation planner and she's helping me with this PowerPoint this evening. And we also have route 200, which is also called the ICC, which splits the baby, splits the difference from north to south. Those are the two biggest um, transportation connectors um, in the master planning. Um, but you'll notice that most of the, the, the most of what's being outlined here is oriented around those two, uh, both US 29, both those two corridors, both US 29 and Route 20, Route 200. Some of the things that we've been doing. Next slide. I think I'm supposed to, yes. Some of the things that we've been doing in the community is we've been building memories, we've been building stories. Um, so as Council Member Jawando had mentioned, the Fairland Master Plan was done in 19, originally done in 1997, and we're back here almost over 20 years ago now to update that plan. Um, we, want, we want you 
to know, we want to know about the quality of life. We want to know about your quality of the quality of your lived experiences. So tonight, I, I hope that you will share those opportunities with us, share that information with us. But we've been out in the community and we've been hearing so far that the cost of living is not getting any cheaper, that most people care about affordable housing, that's primary. And secondary to the affordable housing is the, the natural environment. As you know, youth, they're typically not able to purchase a home, but they definitely care about climate change. They definitely, definitely care about the natural environment. So it, it's no surprise to us that the natural environment is second to affordable housing. Residents also wanted improved, um, improved access to jobs, as Council Member Jawando had mentioned, and more and a more competitive retail market. So it's it's right in alignment with what he just mentioned in the, in the welcome. I'd like to um, take a moment because we missed this opportunity the last time. We would love if you would mind turning on your camera so that we can actually capture everyone in the gallery view really quickly to add to our memories. So if you don't mind, could you turn your camera on and smile really quickly so that we can take a photo um, and have those memories for um, just a quick, quick shot if you don't mind. You have to stop sharing your screen. There we are. So thank you. I see a lot of familiar faces too. So I'm really appreciative of that. Um, every, everyone who's on the team, if you don't mind, also sharing your screen too, so that we can see your nice, beautiful faces. I'm going to take a quick little shot. It shouldn't take very long. I hope that Lauren, you tell us when you're ready and you you finished. Thank you so much, Mo Michelle. Okay. Okay. Thanks for this joining. This is a historical me. moment. This is a historical moment, Reggie. Your lovely faces. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Did you get it, Lauren? I got some. Awesome. Great. Okay. We're going to get back to the presentation now. And I'm going to turn it over to Catherine as she's going to walk us through some of the environmental conditions. Um, some of the environmental Hi, conditions that are specific to the Fairland Bridge Cheney Master Plan. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, everyone. Um, we're looking at Fairland uh, right now through an environmental lens, and there's a number of uh, interesting aspects of, of this unique area. On the left, um, there's a geologic map, and the, the red stipples are areas of sand and gravel. The orange area is our master plan area. And uh, I've circled a, a few of the active mines that were in place in 1975. And that's considered a decline of the mining that took place in this area. Um, there's a picture in the middle of the, um, the deposits of sand and gravel that were so useful. Um, that, that mines were all over the place um, in this uh, fall zone between the coastal plain towards Prince George's County and the Piedmont, which is uh, the rest of Montgomery County. And even in an air photo from 1985, you can see a um, active um, extraction operation taking place, um, probably where there are our homes right now. Um, so the landscape has been altered because of this. Um, and um, many of you probably don't recognize that, but it's um, a part of the legacy here. Um, the next slide shows that how this unique geology has actually created some really unique and outstanding habitat areas um, just north of, of the master plan and the new conservation best natural area um, has been identified by the Department of Parks, as well as the Upper Paint Branch, uh, outstanding water quality area. The further down in Paint Branch is the Paint Branch Gorge biodiversity area. Um, and that's just the areas of parks that have been uh, identified. Um, there are other exceptional areas outside of parks for instance, um, the, fall, the fall line 
uh, magnolia habitat. There are a couple of areas that are located right in um, this master plan area. Uh, next slide. So uh, in the middle image um, from this scale, uh, I've shown the canopy, the area where there's shade within the planting area. So um, wherever there are trees, especially within the parks, but also within the built environment. So it's a very leafy area overall, uh, except when you do some close-ups. Um, one of them is automobile circle. Um, when this was planned, uh, this area was to be very shady and it had very large tree panels, um, not just around the perimeter of the circle, but within the circle. Um, uh, the climate action plan um, addresses and identifies these areas as vulnerable due to the vast unshaded impervious surfaces and the dangerous heat that can develop in these places during the summer. Um, and the Climate Action Plan also um, uh, proposes to address areas like this that, um, that over the years are the result of a lax enforcement of zoning and, and environmental requirements. Um, also, you can see Paint Branch High School, although it was rebuilt um, 10 years ago or more, um, it is still distinctly barren, especially in the parking areas. This should be corrected uh, on this and other public land, not just for the sake of the children and staff, uh, but also for others who may need to use these spaces in an emergency situation. The Climate Action Plan calls for the development of what they're calling resiliency hubs that can be powered off the grid, off the electric grid, and can serve as heating and cooling centers, places to recharge electronics and get on the web and perhaps get some food and water. These are just a few of the Climate Action Plan recommendations that should be applied in Fairland, and we'll work to incorporate them into this master plan area. Back over to you, Molly. Thank you so much, Catherine. So now here comes the fun part. Right now we are clearly in the very beginning, in the very beginning stages of um, this master plan in the listening stage. So this is the perfect time for you to get involved. I want to bring to your attention the fact that in a few minutes, we're going to be breaking out into smaller groups. But right now we're gonna take a minute to get warmed up with the help of Story Tapestries, Renee and Michelle are gonna kind of go through um, both a quick poll um, and introduce some ice breaking, uh, an icebreaker to get us um, talking to one another. But I wanna mention the fact that when you get into your smaller sessions, we are using visuals, one of which you should have received with the link to this meeting, which was a composition book. I want you to feel free to use that composition book if you haven't already, even if you don't do it at this current moment, if you didn't get a chance to print it out, I still would like you to, um, to print it out eventually and uh, go through the exercise that it's, that's in the composition book um, so that we get a visual. And you're more than welcome to email it to me when you're, when you're finished with it. The other visual that we're using is a Jamboard. I'm sure some of you are very familiar with that, but um, we'll, we'll provide more instructions after the icebreaker. Reggie, Michelle, are you there? You want to get us started, Michelle? Absolutely, absolutely. Hello, everybody. My name is Michelle Faulkner Forsen, and I'm the Partnerships and Innovations Director with Story Tapestries. I'm really excited to see everybody and to hear your point of view about all these lovely questions about the community. Um, but before we get started, we're going to do a quick survey here on Zoom. And let's, okay, here we go. Um, we have seven questions. If you see the little pop-up, just go ahead and go through them. Um, the first question, are you a resident of Fairland and Briggs Cheney? Uh, it's yes or no. Uh, second question is, do you work or shop in Fairland or Briggs Cheney? Okay, what else we got here? Number three is, do you use public transportation? 
Number four it is, what is your age? They give you a range, so don't get intimidated by that question. <laughs> um, number five, do you speak more than one language? Six, where were you born? Gives you some areas. And last but not least, what is your race slash ethnicity? And we're just going to take a couple seconds to get that information from you all. And then we'll share the survey results. We have just a couple more to go. Yeah. I was looking, I was like, I don't even remember how many people were in here in the first place. <laughs> so All right. I think we have about 36 people here. We'll uh, give it just yeah. another couple seconds. Yep. All right. Last chance. Thanks, okay. everybody. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. All right. Stop sharing that. It's okay. All right. And before, um, as we getting started, I want to um, introduce my colleague and friend, Reggie Kabiko, who will get us uh, loosened up for our next um activity, which is our icebreaker. So here we go. Reggie Thank Kibiko. you so much, Michelle. I am Reggie Gubico from Story Tapestries. I'm coming to you live from Union Market in Washington, DC. Um, I am honored to be part of the Briggs Cheney Master Plan. Story Tapestries um, does a lot of work in the schools and in the community, um, having people share their stories. We want to hear from you. This is a listening session. So um, we're going to do a little bit of an icebreaker. It's going to be a creative icebreaker. We really want you to think in sensory detail. Um, so I would like to ask you all, um, there is a chat box. And if you click on that, um, you will be able to type into the chat box. And my first question for you is... Uh, if you could describe your neighborhood through colors and sounds, what would those colors and sounds be? And again, with colors, I know we got red, blue, orange, yellow, but feel free to go into, um, I don't know, uh, Magnolia Red, for example. You can blend those colors with something else. You can invent your own color. And with sounds, there are nature sounds and there are some street sounds. And you could even be detailed if that is coming from a specific place. And if you wanted to name a place, that would also be terrific. So again, it's how would you describe your neighborhood with colors? sounds, and uh, maybe with some detail. I encourage you to stick a place there. So you could put multiple words in the chat box. Oh, and by the way, um, I'm going to uh, count down five, four, three, two, one. And when I say waterfall, that's when I want everyone to send their answers. All right. So that way we can like just go in there like in a big waterfall of images we got a couple all uh, right people that already responded but we'll get we'll start reading things out shortly so i also wanted to say um we had like an 85 percent uh camera on for that photo so i don't want to let that energy go so we encourage you to put your video camera on. I know it's been a long day, but I'm gonna give you some pow energy. Pow, pow, and pow to energize you all. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Waterfall, and please give me some of your images. Wow, we got from C. Patrick, green trees, brown, green paint, light brown, blue, paint branch green. Very nice. 
speeding cars going down a main road, the birds chirping, polka dots and rainbows, swooshing green trees. Very, very nice. Um, very, very nice. And um, keep it going, keep it going. You're probably asking, why are we doing this? We want you to think out of the box. Um, in our listening discussion, I want you to get a sense of um, who some of the people are in the room, but also for you to, to just speak with some sensory details, right? Very nice. Um, Rachel's got full orange and red with birds, chirping the owls hooting in midnight dark, birds blue. Um, yes. All right. Um, we're going to end with a short group poem here. And don't worry about it. Um, I want you to look at the sentence, I feel like. And I feel like, and I want you to finish that sentence. I want you to use any of the images in your neighborhood. Uh, it could be a person, place, thing. Uh, I feel like, um, again, you can give me some nature objects. You can put some man-made objects. You could put some sounds into that sentence. I'm going to put some examples in there. I feel like a grand piano is sailing on an ocean. I feel like a tired coffee cup staring at the ceiling. By the way, I don't know the best Bridge Cheney um, coffee shop. So I would have maybe, to be specific to my neighborhood, put the name of my uh, favorite coffee place or place that I'd like to go to. All right, I feel like, so we're just gonna create a group poem. I'll give you 10 seconds. I feel like you could put your colors in and any of the images that describe your neighborhood, Bridge Cheney, and five, four, three, two, one, and waterfall. Very nice. All right, Jazz Clef, you better work. I feel like the fantastic frenzy of the international market. I love the fantastic frenzy. I feel like the vacant saucer of ice cream parlor waiting to open in the spring. Yes, Michelle. Very nice. Um, let's take a look at these lines. I am going to allow folks to unmute their mic. And if there is a line that people would like uh, to shout out, please um, shout out the line and just scroll through here. I really like Lawrence. I feel like a child jumping in a pile of leaves. That, that brought back some memories right there. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And like um, Rachel's, I feel like the naughty squirrel flitting around the tree limbs. Very nice. I love uh, Michelle Nelson's, I feel like an old book creaking open for another read on the couch. That made me feel really cozy. <laughs> like a cup of tea or hot cocoa. I feel That's you, what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, good job. I, I was with you there. <laughs> Very nice. Um, what I would like to do right now is I'm going to um, turn it back to Molly. Um, and I know that we're going to go into our listening session. So Molly, take it away. Yes, yes. So it's your time and we're giving you the mic. So it is 7.01 and you got plenty of time. You have plenty of time to open up. 
I would like for you guys to introduce yourselves as you're going into your um, your smaller breakout groups because we didn't get a chance to introduce everyone, but the team members are here and I and I encourage you to meet and greet with one another. Um, if Lauren, if you could, um, I'm sorry, no, we, we're gonna move on to the breakout sessions. Um, Philip, are the breakout rooms ready? We're ready to go. Okay, All right. okay, well, I'm gonna stay in this main space and the main space here is going to be orange. While if you get into the breakout room with Rachel and um, hey Sue, your color is green. Um, you know what, why don't we just go to the breakout rooms so that we give you the most time. Um, go ahead and accept your re meeting request if you haven't already done so. Thanks, we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Philip, I do have a meeting request up. Should I join? Um, because there was some, well, I can explain I'll later, stay. but no, you don't have to, okay. no. Okay, I'll stay right here. And I see that um, Melissa is here with me. And I see that Muhammad is here, Julia, Lisa. Very nice to meet you. If you don't mind, um, we could see each other's faces. I meant to um, ask people to share their cameras so that we could have a face-to-face -face conversation. If, if not, we can keep it this way. Can you guys hear me okay, at least? I think Melissa dropped off, but is Lisa or Julia or, or Seamus in the room? Muhammad is with us. He's our IT person. Lisa, are you there? Julia, are you there? Hi, Reggie. Hello, Hi. hello, Michelle. Hello, Reggie. Hello. Um, I I think the only two community members here are Lisa and Julia, but I'm not sure if they're able to speak. So um, I can just ask you guys the questions and we'll just keep translating um, and get this party started here. Thank you, Roberto, for um, assisting me in advance with um, the questions. But sure. the questions that we're going to um, go over here, I'm going to get us started with... Um, can you tell me, for the folks who are here, Seamus, feel free to jump in. Um, Muhammad, feel free to jump in too. Um, and Julia, Lisa, if you're able to join us, if you're able to talk, feel free to join as well. Uh, introduce yourself when you ans answer the question. Then. Okay, so can you tell us about a meaningful experience that you've had in your neighborhood? Anyone want to take that one first? And since Seamus, you're like the new, the new kid on the block. Do you mind um, unmuting yourself and sharing something about your neighborhood? I know you're not Fairland specific, but. Okay, um, <laughs> I've never had a group. Oh, go ahead, <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead, Michelle. Take I it away. Say, say one thing um, would be I, got a residency at the local arts um, community center in my area. Awesome. And it, it's just a way to connect with who's over here. I don't I don't know anyone here in Howard County is where I'm at. I was so, gonna ask you. Yeah, so that's been meaningful in many ways. Can you tell us a little bit about the re residency for those who might not sure. know what that is? Um, so, it's housed, the arts, it's the Arts Council, Howard County Arts Council building, and it's housed mm -hmm. in the, um, like, it looks like an old school building, and um, I am one of maybe two people of color that are in residence there, so um, I just think it's important for me to be there, um, and just to, like I said, to see who's in the community and making art and, you know, just try to build and make connections and just see what's going on. I don't know what's going on in this county. I know what's going on in Baltimore City, but yeah. I don't know what's, I didn't know what was going on in, in Howard County, so. 
So, so let me um, just I can draw... do... say that again. I was going to say, let me just draw on that a little bit while you're talking about art. Mm -hmm. What's what's since you're very familiar with the Fairland Briggs Cheney community, mm -hmm. um, what would you think? What do you think um, the importance or the significance of art is to this community? Oh man, um, to me, it's it should be important to every community <laughs> because uh, I've just had the experience of art being that bridge for everybody. Um, you don't even have to know the same language, like verbally, but everybody knows food. Everybody knows music. You can you cannot understand the words in the song, but you know that beat. Come on, you ready to you know dance? So yeah. Um, I just think it's very instrumental in us being a community. Um, so that's really the importance to it for me. And I so, think art, art tells a story absolutely. of who the community is. Yeah. So, uh, and art is the markings of the cave that, that tells the world who we are, mm -hmm. and what we're doing. And what we've done also, yeah. yeah. And, and let's also, um, is, is, is art a part of your decision making when you choose a place to live? Like, are you interested, are you more interested in places that are more creative and artistic versus places that are like kind of one note or one color? Yes. <laughs> Can you elaborate why, oh, why you would be? Uh, where I live right now, it's so like I have to drive to parks, I have to drive to the art center to go to where I am at residency wise it's it's not as like fun and interesting to look at as Baltimore unfortunately and people have you know a different feeling feeling about Baltimore specifically you know and not but the art and the culture that they've created in Baltimore is it's just um, appealing to me because I see the activity. I, I can feel the activity. Um, people are interesting. People are traveling in to, to be a part of things like that. So it's just, you know, it's just more engaging to me. I'm not engaged where I am right now. So how is it that you live in Howard County, you work in Montgomery County? Like, can you kind of talk <laughs> around that a little bit too? Um, so I moved out of Baltimore City because of the schools, actually. I have two little kids, um, a five-year-old five and a seven-year-old. And every, every area, if you don't know anybody that can get you into the school that's, you know, well-performing, high-performing, you can't get, I mean, you know, we're talking about the lowest bar possible. And... Um, I mean, even that is challenging too, because like when we moved out here to Howard County, um, there's high performance schools, but my son, who I, he is the same shade as I am, um, ran into some hiccups in kindergarten, in kindergarten, and to the point where I took him out for a while so we can all just regroup because it was like everyday phone calls about what he's not doing. So I, you know, it's, I didn't get those phone calls in Baltimore. And I think it's because of who he, what he looks like. And so it's, you know, it's a challenge on both ends. You know, I, I want him, I want both of them to be able to um, participate in school fully as themselves and not have to feel and engage with all of that, the drama. But that's a part of the systems that I set up for you know us to be in so it's just it's a challenge all the way around but that's why we moved from baltimore to howard county okay still have I, problems there i picked on you long enough i think i'm gonna um also <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna bring some other folks into this conversation because yeah, i yeah. see that um is it miss roberts can you pronounce your first name is it good can see it. Kanisha? 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 Kanisha. 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 I'm please forgive me. I'm terrible with names. Kanisha. Okay. Um, are you are you living in Fairland, Briggs Cheney? Or yes. are you work? Oh great, great. So why did you choose to live in Fairland and Briggs Cheney? Why did you how did you decide to make 
to live there? Um, wasn't well, I don't think my my husband really thought that far when we moved in this area. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, it's available. We're here. Um, we moved here from Georgia, and we've been here for a few years now. So it's just we moved around, but it just always seemed like we kept coming back. So I'm just gonna say divine intervention. I don't know. Okay, we'll kind of okay. figure all that out. I like but, it. <laughs> But yeah, Georgia in the house, y'all. I know. My father was in Georgia. Represent. My father, my father moved to Georgia. He was born in D.C. and moved to Georgia. Oh, okay. Cool. So, do you like living here then? What do you What do you like about living in the Fairland and Bridge Cheney community the most? Um. So I don't. I these. I guess since COVID, I've really been like just getting out doing like finding my niche i'm a wife and mama six so it just seemed like every time i would get a little snap back was like up oh, the pregnant again so i'm really just reaching like just just trying to find my area if that makes sense um I it makes sense. Working, yeah i enjoy working with children i am an entrepreneur so just i think right now for me it's not really about a specific area but since i have been in this area for so long it's about getting connected to it um yeah. so and finding which route of connection works for me does that make sense yeah that makes so, all the sense all the does, sense it does make sense and you're a busy lady <laughs> yeah <laughs> like <laughs> so yeah. but but i'm sure you're familiar with like schools and things though right like is there anything about the school system that you'd like to share around that um I was on the PTA, but like I was active, inactive. I was just there. Um, I'm pretty much, what is it? I, 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 I bounce the beat of my own drum. Like if there's an issue, I go, I deal with whatever the issue is at hand. Um, I'm really not a, what is it? Clicky or groupy person. But like, if I find out about something, it's like, oh, if I have the time to do it, it's like, oh, well, let me see how I can assist or be part of it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm more hands-on and more creative than I guess policies and things like that, if that makes sense. No, that, mm -hmm. that makes perfect uh -huh. sense. That makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. Um so you already said is let me bring some other folks into this. I know Julian is on the on the phone too. Julian, you know a lot about kids too. Yep. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Can you talk to me about like what you might know since you're around a lot in, in the Fairland and Briggs Cheney community, but do you know anything that's connected to the history of the place? And um, can you talk a little bit about some of the connections that your organization has made and um, like any historical moments that your group has experienced? And introduce your group too, because I don't know if everybody knows your group. Sure, no problem. Uh, how, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Julian McElveen. I'm the president at Unity Youth Development Corporation. Um, we are, uh, or Unity Thunder, for those that are familiar, we're based in Burtonsville, uh, right at uh, Benjamin Banneker Middle School and all surrounding schools around there. So we're, we're in the Burtonsville, Silver Spring, White Oak area, uh, Colesville. Um, we've been there since 2004. Uh, I've been the president since 2020 during COVID. Um, and um, we, let's see, we started out as a, a group that split off from uh, PG County League and we um, started another organization uh, of just moms and dads who were in the East County community and wanted to do something there that was holistic and, um, guess, you know, inclusive, that's the best way to put it. Um, there are some organizations that, you know, they're about winning and they, you know, they'll cut a kid, you know, because they can't perform at a certain level and all that kind of stuff. And that's just not how we work. Um, so we do have a program um, that's, we're in our 17th year now, and we have uh, tackle and flag football, basketball, baseball. Uh, we do soccer through ICETA. Um, which is another local community um, organization that focuses on soccer and academics. Um, and we do, uh, we're starting wrestling this year, lacrosse. Uh, 
and, and through our programs, we've been able to get kids, um, really the biggest influence for us is getting kids off the street, keeping them active as much as possible, engaging families um, in Zumba and community outreach and community service. Um, and we definitely try to, um, you know, use all parts of East County. Uh, we do everything from Blair High School up to uh, Northwood, uh, was it, um, geez, I just drew a blank on uh, the one on University Boulevard. Um, just drew a Blair. blank, sorry. Blair. Blair, and what's the one down the street from Blair? <laughs> we were just there for homecoming. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, up to Blake and, and Paint Branch um, and, uh, and um, Springbrook. Uh, our basketball commissioner is a JV girls basketball coach at Springbrook High School. We have several coaches at um, Blake and at Paint Branch uh, that help us out. Uh, we are an all volunteer organization. Um, we, we do have um, contractors and stuff that we try to use and we try to use youth that were a part of our programs at one point and now they're in their teens and 20s and they come back to our organization and we ask them to help speak, you know, speak to the younger kids, uh, coach the younger kids. So it's really about cyclical, it's really about being holistic, it's about community helping community and, you know, taking a village to raise a child. and. Um, more and more, we're getting more involved with the academics and getting in touch with the principals and working with the principals on conflict management in the school. Um, and, and, you know, we've been developing for quite some time. Um, if anyone knows Coach Bo, uh, Coach Bo is an influential member um, who still is. Uh, Coach Bo and his wife, Sharice, uh, they have started iSpot, which is a mentoring program, an after school mentoring program. Uh, we've partnered with Kid Ovation Stage that does arts, culinary arts, and technology uh, program that will be growing more in, in, in our neck of the woods. Um, uh, what else have we done? My goodness. It keeps are going. Your, so are basically, all your kids based in Fairland or, or in the area? Are they all like local too? So or do we they live have, other places? We, most of our kids are in Montgomery County, the majority. Um, I would say probably uh, somewhere between 10 and 15% come from Howard County, Anne Arundel County, PG County. We've okay. had kids come as far as DC um, and in Southern uh, PG County. Um, uh, we have kids come from Mid County, um, Wheaton, um, up from the, uh, the Tacoma Park area. Um, they, they come from all over and um, it's just, they, they come to us and we hope that we can give them a family feeling and, and really just take each kid and, and put our arms around them and say, hey, you know, this is what we're here for. And we're here to support them throughout, you know, their whole lives. Awesome, awesome. Um, can I jump to, let's see, is, I see Theo is here. I don't know if Theo or Seamus are you back with us, Julia? If Possibly. you're with us, just show your face, but go let ahead, Reggie. Just, let me just reiterate, this is your listening session and we want to hear from you. So um, what you need to see, this is one of those rare opportunities. Take it from an old man like myself. Um, you know, this is the moment to really um, change and add some impact to maybe the next 10, 20, 30 years of the neighborhood. So um, if you need to type it in the chat, um, we would just like to know if you are still breathing <laughs> and alive. Yeah. So if you could also just let us know that you are alive and breathing, that is great. Um, I also teach uh, middle school. So I also know what it's like when you have the cameras off. So we definitely wanna hear from you. I see Sam has joined us. Sam, are you there? Sam, welcome. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Can I get you involved in the conversation? Do you live in Fairland, Bridge Cheney? Yes, I do. Awesome. Okay. So, um, so what made you choose Fairland and Bridge Cheney as a as a neighborhood to live in? I uh, used to be a resident in downtown Silver Spring still like the Silver Spring area, wanted to be kind of city adjacent, but not be 
you know, too close to the city anymore. So we chose mm -hmm. um, what I think is a, a beautiful kind of suburban-ish area uh, out that, outside the city that's about 15 minutes away. So okay. Ideal do therapy. you also work in the Fairland and Brickshane neighborhood or do you have to No, I work in DC. Awesome. So how do you how do you commute to work? I actually started my current DC job during the pandemic, so I haven't had to commute to work yet. Awesome. Um, but I imagine my commute will be part driving, part metro. When we do go back in. Yes, yes. I mean how has the telework experience been? Have it, has it allowed you to get to know the community a little bit better or? Uh, for, the, for the first couple of months, um, since we were indoors a lot, not really. Uh, but since, you know, things have kind of opened back up, we've got, definitely got to learn the neighborhood a little bit more, especially, you know, Briggs Cheney Road and the Briggs Cheney Market area um, out here. So yeah, I've become a bit more familiar with it. Okay, can you can you describe your your neighborhood? Maybe using some colors. I know that we did this in the in the warm up, but I don't know that we heard from you directly. So I just thought I would give you an opportunity. You said using colors. Yeah, like how would you describe your community? What kind of sounds do you hear in your community on a regular basis? Um, our community is pretty quiet. We're very close, even though uh, we're kind of in a condo area. We're um we're also very close to apartment buildings um okay. so it's kind of a, a good mix of condos and apartments where we're at and it's very it's pretty quiet honestly um the most we hear maybe is you know cars engines that are too loud during the day at the most or you know trash pickup those are the the loudest sounds we hear uh where where i'm situated um but but not not much outside of that. It's a pretty quiet area. Okay. Sam, I just wanted to add, um, because you are working at home, tell me about the work office space, whether do you go out to work and do you find that you need more spaces for you to work? I mean, some people work good at home, but then sometimes people just need another environment. Good question. So I was going to ask about that. Uh, working from home works for, for me. Um, I don't think that working outdoors where I am would be conducive for, for my work environment. So working at home works for me. Um, but I, I'm not opposed to, uh, outdoor workspaces. Like I said, I used to be a resident of downtown Silver Spring and I loved the outdoor kind of work pods that they had set up in the downtown area. Um, during like the summer months and things like that to get to encourage residents, you know, come outside, get fresh air, walk around. Um, so I do appreciate those kinds of spaces, but it would, it probably wouldn't be something I would use too regularly for what I do. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. Was there something that you had on your mind that you wanted to talk about? We're just going to kind of bounce around the room here just to make sure that you're getting everything in because I don't want to run into the timer. But um, was there something that you wanted to talk about tonight that, that you want to get off your chest um, about the community? No, I didn't have anything particular in mind. I just, I really wanted to join to see, um, you know, or to, I guess to hear uh, what's going on, I yep. guess, in our community around, you know, economic uh, improvement or, or um, you know, just trying to get to know what's going on in our community, honestly. Sure. Um, I know something that's been intriguing to me um, since I kind of moved out here, I've been hearing rumblings or, or seeing new news articles about construction that's supposed to take place on Tech Road that's not too far off from here. Um, and it's supposed to, I think there's supposed to be like a new uh, grocery store and some like a shopping center or, and I forget what that project's called, but I was wondering if, if that project was going to be brought up during this call and how that might, um, you know, interact with the Fairland Briggs Cheney area um, since we're we're not too far off from that construction project. Well. It would have a big impact because what we've been hearing in the community is that they need another grocery store. So 
it would it would probably um, give the only grocery store that's in this master plan um, some competition, which is the global food market. Have you been there before at the Briggs Cheney Shopping yeah. Center? What do you yeah. think about that shopping center? Speaking of economic development and um, I, days. I haven't shopped in it too much. I've been in there maybe once or twice. I typically, if I want to go grocery shopping, I wind up going to Burtonsville or oh. um, over to the uh, White Oak Giant. Um, uh, just because we, I guess, I just prefer the the Giant grocery grocery store. Um, but I know I've had you know family members who come visit that would go over there and they love it. So I think maybe I just need to get familiar with that grocery store a bit more um, because there are so many options that I'm just not familiar with in, in my grocery experience. Um, so, but, but, I think, uh, but I think it's still a great option for residents here. Awesome, awesome. Hi Theo, nice to see you. Theo, face. thank you for turning <laughs> the camera on. It's, it's a miraculous. I prayed. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, I apologize. It's a bad time for my children, so I've been in between. <laughs> no worries. We're glad that you could join us. And uh, we know parents get busy every once in a while. Was someone going to say something? I'm sorry. Did I stop you, Sam? Oh, no. Not at all. Okay. I um, see Benjamin is here, too. Benjamin, if, um, if you're available, we would love to talk with you. And um, we welcome you to open up to turn on your camera as well if you can if you're comfortable with it can you hear me benjamin i was talking to myself sorry how are you we're doing well welcome benjamin <laughs> and welcome theo um we've got a few more minutes left in this room before we come back um, i'm hoping that well what would you like to see happen in Briggs Cheney in, in, in envisioning the future, what is something and thinking of equity and economy, which are really uh, power topics. Um, would just love to hear from you because this is a rare opportunity. Um, thoughts. Benjamin, did you have any thoughts around um, where you live as far as like your shopping experience or if you work in the community? So I live in Burtonsville, but okay. I, I lived um, for oh, four or five years uh, off of Brace Cheney. Um, Why did the, you move? Well, it was an apartment. So I bought, okay. I bought a house, my wife and I bought a house. So not too far. So I'm familiar with the global market that you were talking about former Safeway, that whole area. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I, in my mind, you know, I'm fairly active on the Burtonsville side, just with the community. And I think I, I grew up in Langley Park, spent all my life in Silver Spring in the area. So what I, what I see is a connective of like, I call it East County um, and economic development. I was at, I'm actually the vice president of the PTA for Burtonsville Elementary. So one of the things that we were just looking at for the capital improvement uh, plan was that um, they have, they call them like uh, priority zones, economic mm -hmm, priority mm -hmm, zones. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, you know, normally you would just think inside the beltway, it makes sense from an economic perspective. But if you look at the map, they've pinpointed certain areas out in Poolsville, out north of the county. And so Ultimately, the county has to find some level of value to invest in the communities. Um, there's always going to be these disparate projects that happen, but really what I've seen, if you take, uh, you know, downtown Silver Spring as an example, there was a cohesive plan and an action. If you see what goes on in Northern Virginia, I work in Virginia, there was a, there was a, a um, umbrella plan and there was quick action both from the government and from the private sector side and so like first step first things first I'm all you know I, I, I sit in all these different meetings whether it's this whether it's uh, Birdsville Crossing whether it's uh, Viva White Oak whether it's Katera it's all of these different things but there's this big umbrella that's missing an investment from the county of like this is an east east county it's a very diverse 
I always tell people I choose to live here, <laughs> right? Like they, sometimes they talk about the size of the county, like, uh, you know, everyone's pushed there, but I, I choose to live here and I choose to invest in this community. And so um, without advocacy, nothing's gonna happen. But I just think when all of these different projects go on, there's gotta be a big plan of like, what, what do we want this community to be? Because a lot of times that initial plan is what gets the investment. These investment investors are not gonna come without a plan and without government backing. And so that's generally how it goes. Uh, and so I'm, I'm always interested in hearing everyone's ideas, but I just see it as this is a piece of a larger puzzle. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is that plan. This is the plan to be able to sell it to, you know, um, county council, because ultimately county council, like members, like council member Will Jawando will see this master plan and will make um, an approval or adoption is what they call it. But um, that's way, we're, we're still in, so what I had, a, I had several questions for you though, but, but I'll start with, um, you said you choose to live in this community. Yep. Can you elaborate on that choice? Like, why did you choose it? You know, kind of give us uh, color, so give us some details. I went, I went to school in North Carolina. I came back, my wife and I, we came here. Um, one of the things that's, uh, I went, to, I lived in Langley Park, but I went to school in Bethesda pretty much my entire life. Parents, my parents made that choice. One of the things that is a key thing that a lot of people that spend a lot of time in the DC area, Maryland, Montgomery County, fail to appreciate is the level of diversity and what that actually does for you in terms of professional growth and in terms of social growth. And so I want my kids to be in an extremely diverse background. And so it's not just diversity by ethnicity, it's diversity in socioeconomics because one of the things that I noticed is I would go to school with a really uh, upper middle class and sometimes low end rich people. And then I would take two buses and sometimes three buses home and I would see the other spectrum of life. And so I had a very unique experience, but I really wanted my kids to be around diversity and not the buzzword diversity, but actual real tangible diversity. And so that's why, and my wife and I talk about this all the time, we're here, we're not going anywhere. Um, we could live other places, but we don't want to live other places. And so I think there's a perception sometimes, and I've heard it on, you know, whether it's county council meetings, there's this, um, they, they use diversity as a, uh, a, 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 a buzzword for, you know, people with lower income of different, uh, you know, ethnicities, and there's not an understanding of there's a richness in the diversity and that if they actually really take a step back and I've invested in, I look at it from a business perspective. Yeah, I was just about to say leverage. Yeah, you have you you have people who you're not tapping into economically. And so I, I always reject that, that, you know, communities are totally based off of income levels and what they'll spend. Uh, there has to be an understanding and, and people wanting to make an economic case to uh, enhance these communities. And a lot of it is from a business perspective is if, if you're first in line, sometimes you get the spoils. And so I think it's always up to groups like this and the county uh, advocacy groups to make that case why businesses and, and governments want to invest first so they could get the spoils. B Benjamin, and then I want to hear from Theo. Benjamin, um, how diverse do you feel on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being, you know, uh, diverse, like it's a small world, like Disney, everything, and then zero being, um, you know, uh, Stephen King, uh, Children of the Corn. <laughs> Good one, yeah. Um, is, this, is this area you're talking yeah. about or just? <laughs> Fairlyn Briggs Cheney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's a nine. I mean, you've got a little bit of everything. Um, and I think it's a flat line, which is good. You have, sometimes you have diversity in, 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 um, in ethnicity and not in thought or sometimes in experience. And so, I, uh, again, these buzzwords of people using this bad words, working class, I see that as an absolute positive. Um, and so you have people that are working, that are, that are investing in, the, in their communities, uh, that don't have the resources to invest more in their communities, as adversely to people who may have more actual disposable income that could spread their resources 
in other states and other um, parts of the country. And so um, I think it's a nine. Thank you. Thank you for the nine. And Theo, um, if money were no object in Bridge Cheney, what would you like to see happen? Money, no object, the vision, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, that's a hard question for me. I'm not so familiar with Briggs Cheney. <laughs> um, I just moved to Maryland within the last two years and I live in Germantown. So I was trying to learn more about Briggs Cheney by coming to this meeting. So yeah, yeah do you want to introduce fun. yourself so they just know who you are in the room, maybe if, if that's okay? Oh, cool. All right. So I'm Theo Holt. I work in the Office of Legislative Oversight as a racial equity and social justice data analyst and um hold on, I got it backwards. Performance management data analyst is kind of late. <laughs> and I've been with the county right over a year, close to a year and a half. So so you should say if if money was no object, every place would be inclusive and welcoming. <laughs> yeah, if there's no option we truly have equity, right? It would be yeah. a place where we are thriving. So Anybody else want to answer that question? If money were not an object, what would you like to see happening in the Fairland Richmond? Can I chime in? Absolutely, Julian. We're here. All right. Well, probably, Molly, you've heard this spiel before, but um, I look across the county and I see Strathmore Music Hall, beautiful, beautiful building uh, on Rockville Pike. And I go to Boyd's and I see uh, a massive soccer complex and I go to Potomac and I see beautiful golf courses and you know I see all of these things um, everywhere but where we are um, there's not a draw there's not a, a tourist attraction and there's not a reason to come you know be where we are except to live and then go somewhere else and work um, so we need something that really brings people to East County that's it Thank you. Well said. I'm gonna use that. We need. We I'm gonna use that. We were looking for quotes, Philip. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> we need someone. Can you repeat that so we can get that again? I've... <laughs> I'll, I'll try. Uh, we okay. need something that brings people to East County. Uh, like I said, I, I use Strathmore as a plug. I used. Um, uh, there's too many things. If you think about Potomac, Bethesda, Rockville, Gaithersburg, yep. uh, we you got know, it. athletic complexes, there's a Rockville football league with two football fields side by side with lights. We have nothing, you know, we have the high schools and the high schools are guarded by some invisible force that doesn't allow the community to really use their facilities. So, um, can I also ask you about that really quickly? Because Michelle was saying, sure. I'm not Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Michelle was saying that her son was having difficulty at the, at the stage of kindergarten. Do you hear yeah. many, many, do you hear from the students that you're working <laughs> with that they're having trouble? You laugh that they're having trouble in their school. Can you talk a little bit about that? Go ahead, could, Julian, preach on it. Oh man, where do I start? Um, so I lived on, on Castle Boulevard, okay? I lived there for five years. I was in an apartment. Um, uh, right across from that Safeway slash Global Foods. Um, and a lot of Unity guys, uh, you know, guys and girls live there, Greencastle Elementary, Galway. So the struggles aren't necessarily education, but um, I forgot who said it earlier, the expectations. I think um, someone's talking about Baltimore City and the expectations are low for places like Greencastle. There are some really great teachers there, um, but let's just be honest, they pass these kids along and they are not disciplined. They are not, they do not have the educational uh, background that they need to be successful, even at middle school, the middle schools, if you ever go to some of them during lunch period, it's like a jungle. Um, you know, the, the kids are all over the place. It's, it's pandemonium in some cases. And that's the environment that our kids are, are trying to work around and, 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 and learn in. And they come in there with varied backgrounds, varied baggage, uh, family situations are all over the place. Um, 
And, and it's difficult. It's difficult to manage just from a community standpoint, much less having to deal with them, you know, in school. And it's really hard. And you see the ramifications. Like if you, if you make the area better, um, when you get to Paint Branch High School, things tend to calm down a little bit. And the reason why is because it's a brand new school, it's beautiful. And the kids, when they get there, they're not as wild because they're in a better environment. The rest of the community doesn't reflect that. Awesome. Um, Molly, ahead, I, wanted Reggie, I wanted to turn it over to you. Uh, Molly, I just wanted to acknowledge um, the uh, new faces that have joined us. Thank you for turning your camera on. Hi, Wendy and Patrick and Carter. And the breakout sessions have ended, so people are coming back into oh, the main space. So we back. can get we can get started with um, the, uh, the the debrief. All right, terrific. Um, welcome back. Thank you for having your cameras on. Um, in a moment, we're going to go through our four groups and um, see what some of the points were from the discussion, um, and maybe we could. Uh, have a little bit of a wrap up because I think each group has generated um, some really juicy topics, Molly. So I'm really excited with what, um, with, with our group here. So welcome. How did it go? Um, and, and Dan and Carter and Patrick and Wendy, how was um, your listening session? So I'm gonna call out the facilitators or the note takers here. I think Don, do you wanna go first? Do you, Don and Lisa, you guys were in one breakout session together. Did you wanna go first and tell us a little bit how your conversations were going? Oh, I'm sorry, Molly. Um, maybe it might be good to go with green, blue, yellow, orange. Okay. I don't know, uh, all right, so um, let's give it up for group number one, um, led by Rachel, Rachel. and Lisa. Um, let's snap it up for the green team, y'all. The green team. Uh, we had a really great discussion. We had two homeowners um, and a University of Maryland student who was really just there to listen. Um, hey, Sue, do you, if you were taking notes, do you want to go into you know some of what we heard, which was a lot. It was really valuable. Yeah, we have, uh, we had a lot of comments that I won't be able to <laughs> completely go over. I mean, you can see by the lack of notes I have in the Jamboard, I was busy <laughs> taking notes. Yeah. But um, I mean, traffic, not the traffic itself, but um, I guess east-west connection across US 29 was a concern. Oh. Other um, transportation related concerns was the townhouse communities with thousands of people living in the communities, but um, not enough ways to get in and out. Um, that was um, concerns um, in terms of affordability. I think our longtime owners, um, because they bought um, a while ago, it, um, they were saying it was affordable for them. But for the younger generation, um, it was said that it, it is, you know, although it is affordable for Montgomery County, um, comparing to Prince George's County, it's becoming, um, oh, wait, where did my notes go? Something changed. Sorry. It's becoming unaffordable. Um, in terms of environmental concerns, um, one, per, um, one concern, I guess, came up was um, in terms of electrical cars becoming more popular. A lot of these um, old, older communities, um, there was concern that, um, I guess, installing charging um, centers for the townhouse communities um, would be a concern to, um, to have ready. Um, retail, um, there was um, desire for more diversity in terms of stores um, that could, um, I mean, that, that could be serving the communities. Um, what else? Um, I think I generally went over some, am I missing anything? <laughs> no coffee shop. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, <laughs> no coffee shop. There's a Dunkin' Donuts, there's a Starbucks, and there's a um, 7-Eleven. But um, I don't know if I'm on mute or not, but I want to emphasize that the lack of diversity of convenience stores. Convenience stores. Okay, yeah, I have those in the notes. Yeah, I have. I have, yeah, I have right. so that would be one thing. So yeah. I mute myself. Sorry. Oh, no, no, that's great. Thanks. 
the notes are so long that I'm just going off of my memory right now. So. <laughs> Um, thank you, uh, Green Team. Um, I'm also, if there are any members in the Green Team, um, some residents that wanted to add something, this is your moment um, in the large screen, uh, in the large Zoom main room. And then we're going to go on deck. It's going to be Team Blue with, I believe, Don and Roberto. So are there any um, residents that would like to add who are in the Green Team? So the green team is actually the pink team because there was a little bit of confusion. Oh. Uh, but uh, John uh, is all be ha more than happy to share if no one from the team wants to share. All right. Sure, pink please. Go ahead. Sure. So um, as evidenced by the, the wonderful pink post-its on, on the Jamboard, um, everyone really liked the location of the neighborhood, of the area. There's perfect equal distance to anything that anyone needs to get to. They like living in the eastern part of the county. However, they noted there needs to be more restaurants, more transit options so people don't have to drive as much. And everyone really likes the trails. And there's a good ride on bus that goes through the neighborhood. People like the diversity. Um, and then we talked about, you know, you know, why we moved here and moved here because of it's an area in between jobs and family. Um, and then we talked a lot about jobs, which I think is really, really a, a good point to bring up is that we talked about how the area needs more jobs and that's hopefully coming with Viva White Oak, but there should also be um, a Montgomery College branch potentially. And, you know, we also talked about what incentives the county could offer to bring jobs. So that's a summary of our points. Thank you so, so much. Um, moving right along uh, is uh, Don and Roberto's team. Uh, is that color blue or is it a new color? Or was that pink? Uh, so team number three, uh, that uh, is Roberto and uh, it might've been Lynn, if someone could. It was uh, me. It was, okay. well, I was, if you're talking about Roberto, then I was in the um, yeah. same team as Roberto. So Roberto, did you want to share some notes? Because I, I took some notes too. Uh, I, I took some notes and hopefully I have kind of tried to group them together. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not a fast typer, so I, I've been trying to group them together. Um, one of the main things is uh, why did you move to the community? Uh, you know, people wanted to be adjacent, close to the city, uh, uh, have a, a quiet area. Um, also, we did talk about uh, the diversity of the community. They, they love the diversity of the community. That's why they wanted to, to live in the community. And diversity meaning um, both uh, in terms of ethnicity and socioeconomic uh, diversity um, so that you see everyone of every type and, and think of uh, working class as a positive uh, uh, thing. Um, but also we, we talked about not everything is being tapped into uh, economically, that there could be more done to tap into the economics of the area. And we, we did receive a great quote and I wanted to, um, one person talked about, you know, you, in, in various communities uh, in the Montgomery County area, you see like uh, Strathmore and in Boyd, you see the soccer plex. What is the draw going to be uh, for the East County area. What is bringing people to the area? There needs to be something uh, that brings people to the area. Um, and uh, another thing is, is talking about um, that there needs to be a cohesive plan uh, and a quick action. Uh, and not just for the Fairland Briggs Cheney, but for the East County area itself. Um, I, I wanted to give a shout out because I was in this group. Um, shout out to Benjamin, Julian, Kanisha, Theo, and Sam C, um, who were uh, vocal. Um, I'm going to turn it over to any of our residents there if they wanted to say something. And I know we're getting close to time, so we want to be respectful of your time. But um, if there's nothing else, I'm going to turn it over to Molly to make sure that all of our groups are represented and have shared. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap us up here, but I'm gonna ask uh, Lauren. I think I lean. Uh, yes, uh, and the yellow 
yellow group haven't got a chance to show. Oh, All right. go ahead. So sorry. So we got the yellow group. So snap it up um, for Lauren and um, Lai and Elin. And Lynn. All right. And um, I think from our room, it will be uh, Lauren or Todd to share. And shout out to Todd. I'll do, a, I'll do a, a quick a quick recap. Um, there's a lot that was similar to other groups in terms of the the insufficient services and options in, in East County as compared to other places, particularly around retail, recreation, uh, discussion about how our, our the access here is is not as good. There's a lot of traffic. It's very hard to to get places. I think the comment that most stood out to me is that it's very, very expensive um, to buy a home and everything is from the 1980s and not very good quality. So it's expensive and old and not 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 very nice and sort of it, it you know it, it um, there's a lot of frustration about that. Um, I'd say that there there's a lot that people like about this area and many people want to stay here. And so it's it's really not a, a complaint about the area. It's really a desire to have better options in a place that has such opportunity and is is really a place people want to be, um, but can't find sort of the quality that they'd like to have. Um, and I, I invite the residents that were part of our group to modify and adjust that if I mischaracterized it all or to add to it, please. So in our room, we have Lisa and Samantha, Sharon and Audrey. They've been very active sharing an idea. And if you have some other, if you, so now you also have the chance to um, add in a little bit of your thoughts. No, now, this is Melissa. I think you are, you know, I've been nodding my head as we've been listening. I mean, for me, it's at a point of, you know, I need to be convinced why I should stay on East County because we have, you know, when you look at other parts of Montgomery County, we just pale in comparison. And like I said earlier, Councilman Jawando helped me understand the historical context as to why it is the way it is. But now we're talking 30 years later, nothing has changed. And um, my guess is change even as we are talking about it now, will not happen even for another five, 10 years. So it's just very frustrating. And I'm just at a place where I need to be convinced to stay. Um, I just added uh, in response to Melissa in our group, um, someone had mentioned there's nothing in Briggs Cheney that would want people to go there. There's no art center like Strathmore or a big athletic facility. There's, there's no draw and that kind of um, either cultural or community opportunity is something to consider. One thing that didn't come out, I will say, is there's not even a presence of professional education. Like I mentioned in our conversation, you know, there was some talk I heard recently that there might be um, a MC Montgomery College campus coming to this side. Um, but that has quieted down, but we just don't even have something to speak to. They are educated professional people here, or we even want you to be educated. You know what I mean? So I think that's something that really needs to be thought through um, moving forward. Thank you so, so much, Melissa. Um, we, there was about five minutes left. Molly, I'm going to turn it back to you. This has Thank been you. very juicy. This has been more than 90. This could have gone on for about four hours, I would think. And I apologize that we, we don't have that amount of time to. But I want to encourage you to, to stay in touch with us. And I, I'm not sure, Melissa, were you with us the first night? Am, am I correct about that? Or Yeah, I'm that chick. And I oh, sent no. you an email. <laughs> no, no. So um, we'll, we'll be friends soon. Yay, I was going to say the exact same thing. Melissa, we need to be friends. So, so let's keep talking. Like this is just the beginning. Let's keep talking. Let's keep talking around how we can actually, um, you know, get that draw 
I think Julian is is here with us too. He he was um, he is a representative from the Unity Thunder group, and he was the one who mentioned that we need something. You need something to draw the people in, and and we couldn't agree more. There was a lot of conversation around schools too. So I want to encourage you to um, to join us for the next conversation. It's as juicy as this one is. Uh, I think this one was our main entree, but the next one is like just is like a second entree to this to this dinner that we're preparing at this table that everyone is welcome at. I wanna tell you that that session is going to be happening November 10th, same time in this virtual space. I hope Melissa, I hope Julian, I hope everyone who um, didn't get a chance to speak tonight comes and joins us for that. But if you don't, if you're not able to come, um, my email is here. Philip Estes' email is here. He is the producer for tonight. We are the co-leads for the master plan. Our team is here. We can put you in touch with whomever you want to speak to, whether it be housing and, and Lisa Gavoni, or whether it be environment with Catherine Nelson. Um, let's let's keep talking. We're building momentum. So, you know, and we're I a work in say, progress. This is an unprecedented listening session, all on Zoom. So it's like putting a whole Oscar show, not just one, but four of them. So, um, so thank you um, for being part of this process. Yeah, I want to tell you that the topic for the next session is all around mobility and access.